Hello and welcome to Wake Up and Smell the Mic S&P 500 review for Thursday, November 10th, 2022. It's now the 9th at 6.04 p.m. Central Time. We start off in the S&P 500 daily chart and to mark to see that the combo and sequential cell setup 2 count was printed. And to negate that for end of day on the 10th, there must be a close below 3770.55 for the price flip to the buy setup count one. And price in the aftermarket hours at 6.05 p.m. on the 9th for the S&P 500 is 37.50. So price could start the day below 3770.55 in which it would start off with the price flip to the buy setup count 1. The trend factor down 1 could become qualified and confirmed at end of day on the 10th. There would need to be an open lower than this close on the 9th. Tick lower than this low on the 9th and close below this close of the 9th at end of day on the 10th and it's really not as significant as a momentum down all it really means is it's probable that will tag the trend factor down to here a qualified demand projection never did print for this qualified demand line. However, there is an ongoing demand line at 37, 19.94. Maybe with a close and move below that, there will be a demand projection printed. And price closed below the conversion line here. So it's in between the conversion line and the baseline. And if price turns around and heads north and closes above this momentum up level for end of day on the 10th, it would become qualified. The S&P 500 support and resistance levels big board chart shows the lone gray area at the uptrend line from 09-24-2020 and price in the aftermarket hours for the S&P 500 at 6.21 p.m. Central Time on the 9th is 37.57. And I added another gray area, the 20 simple moving average at 37.66. So with a great CPI report, meaning inflation, and that is going down all across the board, to the upside would be the 21 EMA, the pivot point, the daily conversion line, the bottom of the cloud, and then possibly get back up over the weekly diamond bottom extension perfect uptrend channel. Inflation worsens, and the monthly horizontal support, first SPX downtrend line from 816-2022, daily baseline, S1 and the bottom of range 2 are all fair game. And I added S2 and the trend factor down to here. If it's a bad CPI report. And I added the weekly conversion line at 3805. If it's a really good CPI report. It will blast through all of this and probably this too. And if the CPI report does blast the indexes up to the upside, maybe it will leave all these bitcoins and that like this in the dust as they should be left. And then break that tether and have equities move up and have crypto move down 
And it would be a good thing if all the spammers and scammers for Bitcoin here on YouTube get killed with this. So the NDXT close, as signified by its cloud lagging line, you can read about the NDXT here, closed at 5470.85 below its NDXT downtrend line. But a good CPI report will change that, and I'm sure at the end of the day we'll have this above the downtrend line. And Rock 1 ended up underneath its pain threshold at negative 2.00. Rock ended up at negative 2.08 and is pointed down. ATR2 is going up. It's at 76.89, fast approaching its pain threshold. And the PPO extreme worsened a bit, negative 6.58% away from getting back up to zero. The NASDAQ 100 daily AD line is still above its 21 EMA signal line, as is the S&P 500's daily AD line is above its 21 EMA signal line. And the New York traditional McClellan breath oscillator to get back to zero would require 1,433 decliners over advancers. So that means the New York traditional McClellan breath oscillator has been above zero for 18 straight days. And the NYA top color, NYA to SPX ratio, basically value versus growth, has gone sideways for two days. So it's undecided whether to tick up to the upside for value play or head down for growth. I suspect that it will head back up for a value play. And the NYA price that shows the big W here. And this candlestick went below the 10 EMA in green. It did have some support, but it did break under it. And the 21 EMA signal line is right underneath it. So it does have that. And Today it did make it above the support and resistance green line here, but didn't get back up to this extra measure rule 1.7, but the other day on the 8th it did tag this 1.7 extra measure rule from the top of the regular measure rule coming out of B to C. So we have a copy of B to C here on top of C, bringing it up here. But I put the extra 1.7% measure rule on the top of the B to C extra measure rule here, just like I did up there. It nailed it, so I don't know if it's going to make it back up there. And once it nails it like that and heads back down, it's not a good sign. And... That was a large red candle to the downside for today. If it gets back under this support and resistance green line here and closes under there, that will negate this big W. Right now I have them all solid blue just to emphasize the big W's that we've discovered this pattern. Have a great day.